This week at Starbase, Booster 15 is relocated to the launch site ahead of the 8th Starship test flight as construction continues on Booster 17, Ship 36, and the extensive infrastructure at the launch site. Now let's dig into this week's update. In the early hours of Friday morning, a new vertical tank was delivered to Starbase and brought to the launch complex for offload as SpaceX continues to work around the clock towards getting their second Starship launch pad operational. Later that morning, a trio of new racks of high-pressure gas tanks joined the new vertical tank at the launch complex to await installation. Meanwhile, a new subcooler with the top-mounted nitrogen boil-off header pipe already attached was transported to the launch complex from the Sanchez site. Once there, the equipment was lifted and lowered into place. That afternoon, a new cryopump was lifted and installed in the tank farm expansion for Pad B. Unlike the Pad A pumps, these new pumps are being installed in above-ground stands, likely an example of SpaceX learning through iteration. Saturday morning started much the same way as the day before with the arrival of a new tank from the tank farm. This time, the tank is a horizontal water tank for the Deluge farm for Pad B. Later that morning, the SPMTs maneuvered the tank around the Pad B area and into the final position. The tank farm build-out continued with the installation of prefabricated pump skids as well as a motor on one of the new cryo pumps in that same area. Around lunchtime, the ship quick disconnect arm was moved out of the way and the chopsticks were raised into the launch position. Over the next few hours, SpaceX performed various tests on the Mechazilla arms, ensuring that they were ready for a catch in the near future. For the third straight day, SpaceX used the calm of night to bring another new tank to Starbase. This tank looked to be the same as the horizontal water tank from the day before. Once the sun rose, crews got right to work, rolling the tank into its final position beside the previous one in the Pad B Deluge farm. At the build site, Booster 15's hot stage ring adapter was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 1 for the second time. SpaceX had apparently snuck it back to the factory for additional work during heavy rain a few days earlier. Unfortunately, something still wasn't right, as just a few hours later, the adapter was taken back to Star Factory. Back at the launch complex, SpaceX was busy preparing for Flight 8 as several new cladding panels were lifted and installed on Tower 1. That night, a booster transport stand was brought from Sanchez to the ring yard in anticipation for Booster 15's trip to the pad for launch. Eventually, the stand was moved into Mega Bay 1. Keeping consistent with the previous days, Monday began with a third horizontal water tank being moved to Starbase for installation in the new pad's deluge farm. Later that morning, the first above-ground prefabricated steel section for the gantry for Pad B was lifted and installed above the flame trench. As the day continued, additional sections as well as the connecting steel beams were steadily installed. This new steel really gives shape to this next-generation Starship launch infrastructure. Work continued at the tank farm expansion with the installation of a motor on the second of the new cryo pumps. Shortly thereafter, a pair of prefabricated assemblies were also installed, which included large diameter basket strainers and associated piping. Meanwhile, back at the build site, a new white steel structure was spotted being moved to Star Factory from the Sanchez site. This is likely a piece of a fabrication or assembly structure and was built at Sanchez like other similar pieces we've seen before. Apparently, SpaceX needed a little extra room in Mega Bay 1 as Booster 15's transport stand emerged empty. Within a few hours, however, the stand was moved back into the building to get the Flight 8 booster. Ship 32's aft section was moved away from High Bay and parked into the ring yard area. A little while later, a detailed section was carried out of the building and taken to the scrap yard at the Sanchez site as the obsolete Starship's aft section was then moved into High Bay for tile removal. A concrete pump truck set up and performed a roughly three-hour-long pour on the near side of the Deluge farm while other workers were busy removing the formwork from the blast wall extension along the south side of the orbital tank farm. For the second consecutive day, crews at Pad A were working to install more new cladding panels in preparation for Starship's eighth integrated flight test. Back at the build site, Booster 15 was finally ready and moved out of Mega Bay 1 for its trip to the launch complex. 
However, due to the apparent struggles with the hot stage adapter, the Super Heavy booster would roll out without the article installed. Meanwhile, the previously delivered third deluge tank was moved into position near the new launch tower. That evening, Booster 17's methane tank was brought out of Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 1. And just minutes later, Ship 36's Common Dome section also emerged from the factory and was taken to Mega Bay 2 as SpaceX continues to add to their fleet. Later that night, Booster 15's hot stage ring adapter was once again brought out of the Star Factory. Then shortly after midnight, the article rolled onto Highway 4 followed shortly after by Booster 15. The Flight 8 hardware spent the next hour and a half making their way to the launch complex. After arriving, the Super Heavy booster headed straight to the chopsticks. As the booster was being moved into position, the theme of the week continued. The fourth new water tank rolled up the road to Starbase, then on to the launch complex where it was switched over to a SpaceX transporter and taken through the D2 gate. As dawn approached, Mechazilla lifted Booster 15 off its transport stand and rotated it over before being set down onto the launch mount. Once the booster was secure, the chopsticks were returned to the hard stop at the base of the tower. SpaceX's large crane at the launch complex then began moving across the pad in preparation for the installation of the hot stage adapter. Meanwhile, over at Pad B, crews were back at work installing the steel for this new launch infrastructure gantry. A little afternoon, SpaceX's crane lifted the Flight 8 hot stage adapter off its stand and installed it atop Booster 15. Within a few hours, the article had been secured in place and the crane was detached. Late that afternoon, Ship 32's aft section was brought back out of High Bay, this time with its tiles removed. It was then taken to the Sanchez site for continued scrapping. That night, preparations for Flight 8 continued as a Block 2 ship lifter was brought to Mega Bay 2 in anticipation of Ship 34's upcoming trip to the pad. Wednesday started the same way as the previous days as a fifth new water tank was delivered to the launch complex for its eventual installation into the Pad B Deluge Farm. At the build site, a ship transport stand was brought from Sanchez and staged outside of Mega Bay 2 to await Ship 34. Throughout the day on Wednesday, crews continued to make steady progress, erecting the gantry for the new launch pad. Early that afternoon, SpaceX performed several tests of the detonation suppression system at Pad A as they continued their preparations for launch. Around that same time, the chopsticks over at Pad B were lifted off their hard stop for the first time. This test didn't last long, however, as the arms were soon lowered back down. Once back at the base, workers went up in lifts to inspect the arms. Back over at Pad A, the arms were also lifted off their hard stop. Once again, the chopsticks were then moved into position at Booster 15's lifting points. Several hours later, the Pad A arms were opened back up and then their landing rails were raised. The arms then began climbing the tower above Booster 15. The chopsticks were then returned to the base of the tower. Meanwhile, SpaceX tested the igniters on Booster 15. Late that afternoon, the arms over at Pad B were once again raised off their hard stop. This time, they traveled a little further up the tower before stopping. That night, apparently still sorting out some issues, SpaceX removed the hot stage adapter from the top of Booster 15 and lowered it down towards the ground. Completing the week consistently early on Thursday morning, yet another new horizontal water tank was brought down Highway 4 and delivered to the launch complex. After dawn, the tank was moved into place, bringing the total to six new water tanks in the Deluge Farm. Up at the build site, the Block 2 ship lifter was raised up towards Ship 34's nose cone in Mega Bay 2 as the transport stand was shifted out of the building's doorway towards a corner of the ring yard. Later, both of Ship 32's forward flaps were brought out of High Bay as SpaceX works to complete scrapping on the outdated ship. Workers were then seen at the flight termination system panel for Booster 15. Although it's not clear if the system was actually installed and ready, work in this area is a clear indication that launch is fast approaching. The Booster Cryogenic Proofing Stand was brought to the ring yard from the Sanchez site, a sign that Booster 16 will soon be ready for its initial round of testing at the Massey Outpost. Later, a presumed booster cap was spotted being carried into Mega Bay 1. 
This is believed to be a relatively simple dome that can be installed on super heavy boosters during testing and storage to protect the top from the elements. The next section on Ship 36, which is the middle of its liquid oxygen tank, was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2 for stacking. That evening, the chopsticks over at Pad B underwent another round of testing as the arms were once again slowly raised partially up the tower and lowered back down. As the chopsticks were going back down, Booster 15's hot stage adapter was going back up. Once the Flight 8 article was lifted and reinstalled on top of the Super Heavy booster at Pad A, the ship quick disconnect arm was swung back in towards the tower. Late that night, crews were once again seen working in the area of Booster 15's flight termination system. At the Sanchez site, a manifold was lifted for installation on the Pad B launch mount. This will distribute water through the various channels in the mount's water-cooled decking during launch. As midnight approached, Booster 16 emerged from Mega Bay 1 for the first time as SpaceX prepared for its trip to the Massey Outpost for proof testing. Switching over to Florida on Friday morning, Falcon 9 fleet leading Booster 1067 was placed onto a transporter for its trip to Roberts Road to be prepared for its 27th mission. Less than two hours later, Booster 1076 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 on its 21st mission as it sent another 23 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Meanwhile, just read the instructions returned to Port Canaveral with Booster 1080 from a Starlink launch less than three days earlier. That evening, the booster was transferred from the drone ship to the dock to await processing. Just a short time later, Just Read the Instructions was towed back out to sea for yet another Starlink mission following a very brief 10 hours at dock. The next morning, Bob followed the drone ship out of Port Canaveral in support of the same launch. Early on Sunday, Doug returned with both recovered fairing halves from the Starlink Group 12-6 mission. And five hours later, a shortfall of Gravitas was towed into port with Booster 1076 from that same launch. In relatively short order, the rocket was lifted to the dock to await its turn on the processing stand. Around that same time, a barge loaded with tanks from Launch Complex 39A emerged from the Banana River and headed out to sea on its way to Texas. That evening, a short fall of Gravitas wrapped up its short stay at Port Canaveral and was towed to sea for the Nova CIM-2 launch. Early on Monday, Doug departed for fairing recovery operations for that mission. That night, dockside processing was completed for Booster 1080 and the rocket was moved to an awaiting transport for its return to Roberts Road. On Wednesday evening, SpaceX kicked off a Florida doubleheader as Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lifted off from Launch Complex 39A carrying several different payloads, including both a lunar lander and a lunar orbiter among others. And just over three hours later, brand new Falcon 9 Booster 1092 launched from Complex 40 for the Starlink Group 12-13 mission. On Thursday morning, Booster 1076 completed its dockside processing and was moved to a transporter for its return to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities. The great Greg Scott and Ferriel Mohan took to the Florida skies last week, bringing us some amazing aerial shots of what's going on at the Cape. Outside of NASA's massive vehicle assembly building, Crawler Transporter 2 sits patiently waiting as the SLS rocket for the Artemis 2 mission is being stacked on Mobile Launcher 1 inside the building. Nearby, despite recent rumors regarding the future of SLS, crews continue to work constructing a second mobile launcher that would be needed for the SLS Block 1B and Block 2 variants currently slated to be used on later Artemis missions. To the east, a historic Launch Complex 39A ground clearing is underway on the north side of the pads from some additional build-out of the site's infrastructure. In the near future, SpaceX is also expected to build a new landing pad just north of this pad. Over at the Starship pad, the chopsticks were in the open position to allow space to drill new structural piles as SpaceX looks to get this site operational after Starbase's Pad B. Moving inland, SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities are once again a hub of activity. The tower construction area looks like it could be ready to assemble tower sections at a moment's notice. More than 40 of the leg bases for the assembly jigs are spread throughout the site, with many of them having already been installed onto the concrete bases. 
Nearby, the first pieces of the new Starship launch mount for Launch Complex 39A are being staged for assembly. This new mount looks to be identical to the one currently under construction at Starbase and is being built within the new tent structure we saw being built last year. This new tent consists of two sections on rails, allowing it to be open for crane access or closed to provide some level of protection from the elements. The most exciting development at the site, however, is to the north where grading has begun for a massive expansion to a SpaceX's facilities. An enormous gigabay is expected to be built here in the near future, dwarfing Starbase's megabays. Eventually, we should also see a Star Factory building on this site as well, as SpaceX looks to the future and a large-scale ramp-up to their production capability. Moving to the south, Blue Origin continues to work to expand their facilities while also preparing for the future launches of its new Glenn rocket. At the 2CAT building, we can see a new Glenn second stage on the test stand inside. Following a failure last year, it appears that the building is operational again now, despite the fact that the door is still in pieces on the ground in front. Another second stage could also be seen parked off to the side of the facility for unknown reasons. The new parking garage now looks to be complete though and is being used by employees. To the north and west of the garage, grading has been done where Blue Origin intends to build a new office building and a hardware integration facility respectively. Moving to the site's south campus, several different construction projects continue to push forward. The structural steel for the new maintenance support facility looks to be about 80% complete now. Next door, construction of the new lunar plant is even further along. Crews are well into the installation of the building's external cladding, working hard to bring it online to start production of their Blue Moon Lander. Steel installation is well underway at the site's new chemical processing facility as well. At the far south edge of the campus, grading has been done where two additional buildings, including a vehicle storage facility, will eventually go. Currently, crews are using the lots for steel storage for the ongoing construction. Over near the shuttle landing facility, it appears that the Project Comet Amazon Kuiper building is now largely complete and even had a pair of trailers backed into its dock. Down the coast, Stoke Space was hard at work on their build-out of Launch Complex 14 for use by their Nova rocket. Smoke could be seen in the area, possibly a result of a controlled burn. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a splash of Blue Origin brought to you by Lab Padre. We're keeping our fingers crossed for a launch tomorrow, guys, and you know we'll be live on location, so hopefully we'll see you then. And until next time, Lab Padre out.